Oh, it's too late, huh? Is everybody uh, aboard? Sort of. And do we have the presentation up? Good evening, everybody. This is um, a town hall for the Semiamu Residents Association. If you're here for some other meeting, I'd suggest you leave now uh, and find that meeting. Um, next slide, please. I am Alec Berkman and I uh, have the dubious distinction of being the SRA board president currently. I have a couple of opening comments and then I'm going to turn the presentation over. Is there something on that printer? I need it. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about why, what, and how. Next slide. I need, I need the, I need the, I need the, I need the bigger slide up. Okay, why? Um, why are we going through this exercise? Um, primarily, it's because we'd be, it, it was just apparent to us sometime early last year that we didn't have the tools to deliver the solutions to many of the problems at the association. We weren't sufficiently trained or skilled enough to deal with issues of a maturing SRA. We had no lines that separated governance and management. Our documentation revealed 27 separate NHOAs with different and conflicting CCNRs. We were and we still are encumbered by embedded policies that didn't make sense in where we were last year and the board had little power to, in, to change them because of their misplacement in the document hierarchy. And there was no plan for continuity whatsoever. Uh, so, next slide. What are we? We are basically a maturing okay, thank you. homeowners association. And we're very much different than we were in the past. We now have about 2,000 people living in Semiamo. And when Debbie started here, there were three houses. I think that number is somewhere north of 900 now. What do we do here? The board governs, it sets strategy and policy. And that doesn't make any difference if it's this particular board or the next board or the board after that. And staff manages the affairs of the association. The board tends to come and go. The staff tends to remain in place. Most of the real governance work should be done at committee so that the board can focus on the direction the association is traveling. Most of the work delivering services and resources to the community should be done by staff. Uh, the next slide, please, which is how. It's been my view that we can become the best stewards of your property values, the environment, and the harmonious community of which we are all a part. Um, that requires us going back to a strategic plan. It requires better communication. It requires an inventory of our toolbox. You know, when we look in there, do we have the tools necessary? I'm going to have to ask for a mute, please. Um, 
if we don't have all the tools, then we're going to have to go out and get them. And they come in the form of skills, knowledge, and abilities that we simply didn't possess. We also need a history and a workable set of documents to build on. We need to understand our own reality. We need to check it. We need to make sure it's real. And then we need to unleash our imaginations to think about things that we just didn't think of in the box before. That's the why, what, and how of the SRA. And this is your board. Patricia Oliveros, Steve Gaisels, who is the secretary of the board, Doug Woods, who's the vice president of the board, Nicole Newton, the resort representative, Helen Worley, who's the head of the elections committee and a non-voting member of the board. Bill McNally, Steve Haynes, who is the chairman of the architectural standards committee. Kurt Hagman, who's currently our treasurer and you'll notice there's an asterisk by Kurt's name because Kurt, uh, this is Kurt's last month with us and his term ends. Uh, my name, Alec Berkman, and then two vacant seats, which will be filled at this Thursday's um, board meeting. And then I'd like to introduce your executive director. Most of you know her. Some of you haven't been here as long as some of the others. So there she is, Debbie Smith. Did she wave? Yeah, good. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> I want to introduce you to uh, Mitch Waterman, who is the CEO of Joint Partners. Um, Joint Partners is an HOA crisis consulting firm. Its focus is helping self-managed, that's what we declared we wanted to be, homeowners associations deal with emergent or critical issues and their job is to help HOAs raise their own bars. Mitch is the former general manager of Sudden Valley Community Association, where he was a director before becoming the general manager. Uh, and he was the general manager there for four and a half years. But he has an entire history prior to being in the HOA business. Mitch worked for the University of California for 35 years, holding various positions in programs and operations management. And he was a treaty officer for the United States of America with the United Kingdom, working for one of our nation's nuclear weapons R&D laboratories. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Mitch Waterman. Mitch Waterman. Your sound is your sound is way low, Mitch. We're gonna raise that. Yeah, that's better. We've had to deal with these technical issues for the last yeah. year and a half. Now you sound good. Now we sound good. All right. Well, well I'll, I'll start yeah. again. So look, as Alex shared, this is the second of three town halls to inform the community of where the association was and where it currently is and where it's hopefully heading. Our company, Joint Partners, myself and Jennifer Seidel, we're a small business and we are involved with helping self-managed HOAs uh, help identify, help them identify issues and propose solutions and then help them implement those solutions. Our contract is scheduled to come to an end on March 31st. And that is when our work is going to end at, sudden, uh, so at, at SRA. So we anticipate all of our contract objectives will be complete to the mutual satisfaction of the board of directors and ourselves, joint partners. I uh, will tell you that SRA is a beautiful community and we wanna thank the members and the board for allowing us to work together. Oh, next slide, please. 
To understand how an HOA operates, you first have to understand the purpose for why it exists and the hierarchy of documents, because these are assembled with purpose. So they exist principally by law for three reasons. Preserve and protect the value of each member's real estate investment and their equity, your home. Establish mechanisms for governing and funding the activities and establish rules that everyone's gonna live by, your, your own municipal law, so to speak. So that's why it exists. And they operate under some very specific laws. For example, the in Washington state, the HOA Act, which is RCW 6438. And for funding, WCAIOA, Washington Common Uniform Common Owner Interest Act 6490. And nonprofit corporation, because you're a nonprofit. And common law and governing documents. Now, to the right in this slide, you'll see the governing document hierarchy. Well, of course, federal, state, county, and city, they come first. And then after that, plat maps. And after that, your CCNRs, articles, bylaws, rules, and policies. Now, the higher up in that hierarchy, the more controlling, the more powerful that requirement is. And the further down in that hierarchy, the more specific, the more broad based the, the statements are, but the less controlling. So if you have uh, something in your policies that say, we shall do the following, but your CCNRs say different, well, the CCNRs control. If you have something in your CCNRs that says you're gonna do something and the plat map says different, the plat map is going to control. So next slide, please. So governance background in 2020. Operating a nonprofit HOA is very different from operating a for-profit corporation. And the laws change, and laws change frequently. Almost all HOAs have annual training for their boards of directors so that they stay current. And this was not happening when we first came in. Now, as a self-managed HOA, it appeared to us that this board, which changes basically quite frequently, they had come in and they were always directing management what they wanted management to do. As a self-managed HOA, one would expect that management would actually be well-trained to help tell governance as they get elected and come on board of how to govern the HOA. And that was not happening also. It's really the management of a self-managed HOA that is there consistently for continuity to help the new board come on and understand their job because volunteers come and go. Now, the majority of associations, and especially larger one, and SRA is a larger one, all have formalized committees with specific roles and deliverables. Because without that, well, committees will take lots of minutes and they will waste lots of hours. Committees volunteers' time is very valuable. You don't want to waste their time. And so having a formalized committee structure that they understand what they're going to do and what their deliverable is gives them the value of being a volunteer in your community. Now, HOA law is a specialty area. It's no different than criminal law or tax law. Now, as an HOA with significant income and with employees on staff, you should have expected to have had an HOA legal counsel in your, in your toolbox, which you did not have. You do now, but you did not then. Uh, your governing documents, they're basically your municipal laws. Assembling them requires a real structured process. And getting your rules in the right location or in the right hierarchy is really important. As a result, you'd have your policies in the right order. Currently, you have embedded policies that should be policies that you can interpret and the board can change. And the board's got the right to change policies and bylaws. They can't change CCNRs, but you have those embedded in your CCNRs. And so let's suppose that your architectural control standards, which are embedded in your CCRs, um, you wanna make a change, you can't. And if you divert from following those CCNRs, well, you can get sued and that is a risk. Now, everyone wants compliance. Of course, that's until you get a letter yourself. Now, current compliance process it could take over a year to get one action completed. 
this process needs to be simplified if you wish it to be effective. Now, it's very difficult to get maintenance performed if you have no idea what you're maintaining and you have no maintenance plan. So expecting your maintenance staff to be efficient and effective with the money you have without having a maintenance plan that tells them what they're gonna maintain and when they're gonna maintain it is unrealistic. And you had no maintenance plan and you need one. And lastly, on this slide, this association had previously initiated a strategic plan. I'm sorry to say that, that when we came on board, that plan had stalled. Well, that plan needed to be reinitiated because without a plan going forward, you have no idea where you're heading. And in the nonprofit world, you, are, you have to know where your association is going. Next. So let's talk about some very specific issues of concern. Ownership and responsibility of the storage drainage system is very unclear. Now, recently, a declarant at Carnousi have agreed to transfer a sizable amount of money to the SRA. This is within the last week to design and reconstruct the bioswale at the Carnousi NHOA. This should not have taken two years. This is a governance issue that needs to be fixed. Secondly, it assumes, it looks like, that about a third of your NHOAs may not have insurance. Well, this is really more of a concern to the people who live in those NHOAs than it is to the association. I mean, we can have several hundred people who actually are living in associations that they believe have insurance for the actions being performed in their common areas. Well, this is probably not the case. If an event occurred in some of these common areas where they do not have insurance, the owners inside that association could be held, probably will be held liable. The SRA is covered. They have insurance. This is a real serious risk to the members in those NHOAs. And the board needs to communicate that to the membership. Lastly, another specific issue of concern the plat, remember the top document, well, the plat for the Drayton, Drayton Hillside 2 assigns the SRA responsibility for an annual geotech survey in that HOA, a yearly report to city planning and to the association performed by a certified inspector, qualified, and to evaluate the property in that area. Well, we can't seem to find any of those reports. We've looked. And we, this requirement goes back to 2006 when the plat was made. So the board is asking itself, they were assigned this responsibility. The people who live in Drayton Hillside too were expecting when they bought their houses based on the plat that this was being done. So you have to ask yourself as the board is asking itself, What's the risk and liability to the entire membership for not keeping up on actions of this sort? Next. Let's go back to where we were with management when we first came in. When we met the management team in September of 2020, and they are as nice as they all are, they didn't have the skills, knowledge, and ability equal to their peers in similar sized homeowner associations. You have to think of HOAs of this size as operating a small city, as I said. And what we quickly learned is the SRA had been operating as an island. Since it was created, and maybe in the early days this was not true, you have not been benchmarking to understand what are the best practices. How is an HOA, a nonprofit, to be operated for the benefit, benefit of the members? What are the real reasons and drivers for how you're to operate this HOA. I mean, actually everyone that bought a house that you're watching right now, you're saying to yourself, well, we want our home maintained and we want our property values maintained, but we, the SRA, had not been looking at how to do that. We were operating as an island. The association lacked HR integration. This is a significant risk for a business. And without understanding or providing a requirement for providing personal protective equipment to your employees, we're talking ergonomics for the admin staff as much as personal protective equipment to your maintenance staff. It was a huge risk and you were not providing any of those capabilities to protect your employees. 
In the last five years, maintenance department has rotated 12 employees. This is a very high cost in terms of dollars to you and lost productivity. This is very high turnover. Technology, well, it's a tool, we all know, and you wanna use your computer, but it's a tool to your employees. And your employees currently are using antiquated tools. Uh, not understanding contracts, staff is pretty good. They want to do the right job, but they didn't understand to have all their contracts evaluated by both their insurance agent and legal counsel to make sure that you receive the best leverage of those contracts. That was not happening. Staff had never been trained to operate under the hierarchy of documents that exist for this HOA. Never have been trained. They did not understand how to use them or how to bring them to the board and say, listen, this needs to be updated. Uh, you have the authority or please put this in front of the membership. The most active community in the entire association, the ASC, it was not functionally supported by a trained staff person. Now, last, I'll say that the most efficient expenditure of your operating maintenance money would require a maintenance plan and the association didn't have one. And without having one, you're uh, scheduling money to be spent, but you're not planning on how you're gonna get it done. And lastly, if staff had the belief that if they brought anything forward for a funding request, if it was not the absolute actual lowest cost, bottom dollar penny that was going to cost to purchase something, it would get turned down. We're gonna suggest that best value is the right basis for making a decision like this for an association, not lowest cost. Now, with that, I wanna thank you, and I'm gonna turn this over to my partner, Jennifer Spidel. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Um, my name is Jennifer Spidel, and I'm a CPA and a CMCA. And I just wanna talk a little bit about uh, where the SRA was at financially in, in September, 2020. Now, just to start it off, a proactive approach to preventing fraud and embezzlement is really the right strategy. Now, Semiamu is lucky because your executive director, Debbie Smith, is as honest as the day is long. However, she won't always be here. And, and should we really wait until she's gone to institute internal controls? Or should we instead put them in place now and train all those involved in the process what their role is in preventing fraud and to make it common practice and commonplace among the staff and volunteers at the association? I believe that that proactive approach is the right strategy. So the financial controls were not proactive. Um, there lacked many documented financial policies improper cash controls, uh, and the funds are physically at three different banks commingled. Uh, it is the best practice of the CAI Community Association Institute to physically segregate the funds uh, operating in reserves at the bank, uh, not just on a spreadsheet. And budgeting, uh, no bottom-up budget had been created in memory until uh, this year, and historically that annual budget was created by just taking a percentage of the prior year's budget or projection. Now, just to clarify, there has been no fraud discovered at Semiamu Residence Association. Uh, just want to clarify that as well. And so I believe now uh, our SRA director, Steve Geisels, is going to speak on governance. Great, thanks Jennifer, I uh, appreciate it. So as Jennifer said, I'm Steve Geisels and I'm one of the, the newest uh, members of, of the board now going into my third month. And so um, learning a lot. I'm also a relatively new member of the overall community here. And, and like you, I love this community. So all of you participating, whether you're just listening tonight or you're part of the board, you love this community. You're passionate about this community. Um, and, and there's so many others who are not joining us tonight that, that are involved in this community in big ways and in small ways to improve our community. In fact, I was walking on the spit this morning and there was this woman, she had her little uh, uh, trash picker upper 
and she was taking trash right off the Drayton Harbor shoreline and she was putting it into a bag. Amazing. I was driving to the golf course this afternoon and I saw, yes, so any of you from Prestwick Village who are uh, joining us tonight, I saw you out in front planting flowers, getting messy with the mulch, but it looks beautiful. And you're doing it because you're engaged, because you're impassioned and, and you're passionate about your community. And truly great communities in this country are full of engaged, committed and passionate folks. And while I've only been on the board a short time, I enjoy working with my fellow uh, board members to address both the challenges and the opportunities faced in, when you govern such a large luxury residential community. So I'm gonna give you a view of a director uh, relative to some of the things that Mitch was talking about. And so I'm gonna talk about the process that the board has engaged in from uh, the, um, with joint partners around the topic of governance. Now it's kind of, yeah, just the topic itself, right? It's kind of a boring topic, but it's really, really important. So I've been on organized boards and I've been on disorganized boards. And I can tell you, it's a lot more fun and a lot more productive to be on an organized board. And I know a lot of you are engaged in all kinds of different communities. Uh, and, and you know what I mean? right? It's about being organized and disciplined as a board. That's when you get things done. So as far as the SRA is concerned, it's super important for us right now in our evolution to be structured and organized. Uh, I'm a banker by trade, and I've seen many small organizations grow into larger organizations, and they struggle as they get larger. And most need and will receive a helping hand to help structure them for sustained growth, growth. And that's basically what we have happening right now at the SRA. We are investing in our future right now as we grow into a larger, more complex organization. And this investment will help organize us for our future. So specifically, I've been working or we've been working with the consultants on the board governance structure. And we wanna make sure as, as Mitch talked about uh, before, this is lasting. The board governance structure as it's coming together is allowing us to accomplish five things as I see it anyway. Number one, clarity of purpose. To truly understand as board members, our mission, our role, and our accountabilities. And just as important, what is not our role so we don't drift into areas that take us off our focus, right? So many of you who are involved in other organizations have seen this happen. It's called mission drift, right? So you, you're supposed to be working on this and you find yourself after a while going in a completely different direction. So clarity of purpose, really important when it comes to governance. Number two, be more efficient, organized, and strategic in the way we operate as a leadership team on the board. You'll hear more about this um, and some details around this a little later on in the presentation. Number three, make better and more informed decisions that are in total alignment with our vision and our mission. And later on in this presentation, you'll hear from fellow board member Doug Woods about the new mission and the new vision of the SRA. And number four, and you heard Mitch talk a little bit about this, it's the acquisition of knowledge and skills by not just the board, but by the staff as well. So what do the state laws and statutes say about the way we govern? We need to know that. What do the SRA CCNR say? How can they be modified to be more helpful? And what do the neighborhood HO, uh, HOA CCNR say? And how did these governing documents impact our ability to act and make decisions? We need to know all of this at the board level. And the fifth, and I would say final, is really about sustainability. We're building the kind of board structure that is sustainable and lasting so that the next board, when they come in, they don't have to reinvent the wheel. So we have this initial cost up front to get the proper governing structure set, and then the actual structure should last for many, many years. So from my perspective, and keep in mind, I've only officially been on the board two and a half months, the work that we've done with the consultants has been helpful to the SRA. 
Um, and in fact, I've taken some of the information from that I've learned um, with uh, with the consultant. I've actually put it into practice uh, in the Airy neighborhood HOA. I'm the pres current president of the Airy neighborhood HOA. So, um, but that doesn't mean I'm here tonight to justify all the costs and expenses of the consulting work, right? I know that's been a topic out there, right? Only time will tell if that investment was truly worth the dollars that we put into it. All I'm saying, it's definitely from my perspective as a newer board member, been very, very helpful. So it's all uh, at this point, we are ready to be the self-sustaining organization because you heard Mitch say earlier that the contract ends in a couple of weeks here, but as a board, we're ready to go. So with that, I think I'm turning it back to uh, Mitch. Uh, Debbie Smith. Oh, to Debbie, sorry. <clears throat> Helps if you can hear me. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for attending tonight's town hall meeting. My name is Debbie Smith, your executive director. The role of management and day-to-day -day operations, and those key factors are to preserve and protect the value of each member's real estate investment and equity, to maintain the common areas, provide administrative services and protect the infrastructure of the association. And I thank the maintenance staff for the excellent job that they're doing maintaining the common areas and to perform the financial management role of accounting and collections with the help of an accounting manager and to ensure compliance of, of ASC in the community. And I thank Krasinda Plankovich for her efforts thus far as our ASC administrator. All right, management today, as has been mentioned uh, in the beginning of this um, presentation, governance and management are now separate. And we've held a staff orientation with all the employees to establish a clear understanding of their roles and how they relate to the mission statement of the SRA. And the entire management team has been on undergoing steady and frequent training and mentoring and a few of those highlights are implementing financial controls, working effectively and efficiently as a team, information retention and retrieval, and all employees have appropriate PPE. Um, I have been working with an HR professional who has been very helpful in any HR matters that may arise. And with that, I'd like to um, assure the membership that we're just going to keep getting better and better on your behalf. So thank you very much. And I will now turn this over to Christina, or excuse me, Krasinda Plankovich. Thanks, Debbie. Um, thank you. Thanks for having me today. I am Krasinda Plankovich, and I am the new Architectural Standards Administrator. I'm in my first two months in this position, um, but I actually have over 20 years of experience in nonprofit management before coming to the SRA. I've been working together with Steve Haynes and the Architectural Standards Committee, as well as Debbie Smith and Jessica from Joint Partners, who really laid a great foundation for us to get started. She did a lot of the groundwork in developing um, tracking documents and identifying procedures that needed to be addressed so that we could jump right in. So thank you to Jessica. I wanna provide a little bit of context to the work that's being done in this department um, in February, which was the only full month I've been here, we reviewed seven construction related projects, five tree and landscape reviews, uh, six exterior alteration requests, and 11 active non-compliance issues. So there is a lot going on and we know that there's areas that we can improve in. Um, we really wanna focus on our goal of maintaining the natural beauty and harmonious design of the community while increasing efficiency and improving response times. Some of the things that we're doing to address that, which you may have even already noticed, are increasing our website resources. Um, we've published the Architectural Standard Committee schedule and deadlines for folks. Um, also creating forms, which we've been working on and hope to get up soon for people to do requests for things like tree removals and exterior modifications. 
One of our top goals is to have a consistent committee review process and standardized messages and response letters to the community and the homeowners. We want to make sure that our responses are professional and actionable for you. Some of the tracking and documentation that's been taking place, um, we developed a uh, tracking sheet for homes under construction, which we currently have 34 projects being tracked. We also have 27 open compliance issues and 23 that are closed. So although we're actively working um, 11, there's a lot of them still in backlog for us to address that we've been working through. We got a digital file archive set up by address so that we now have digital file folders for every address, which has been really helpful in providing information to folks and archiving information. And we've been doing reviews and updates of the standards and community rules. Uh, one of the first things that we did was put out a new policy for communicating and implementing changes to make sure that there is follow through on the decisions that were made by the board that the committee had put forward. Some of those that you might be seeing soon on um, the emergency hazard tree removal process, um, things that weren't really clear as far as how to move forward in a situation that might need an urgent response. Draft new policies, um, the curb ramp policy you'll be seeing here soon, as well as the raised bed vegetable garden policy, and an additional list of approved materials for metal roofing. Some of the questions that have been coming up often on the committee. We're starting to hold stakeholder meetings. We uh, have a regular meeting with the city of Blaine now that's happening once a month. That's been really helpful. We're also starting to talk with contractors um, and undeveloped lot owners about what we can do to help facilitate the building process and where the rubs are. So that's one of the things that's being planned in the near term future for us. So that's just a quick synopsis on um, what we've been working on. And I would like to pass it over to Bruce Bishop, who's the SRA maintenance manager. As soon as I get myself unmuted and video up. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bruce Bishop. I'm your new maintenance manager, and I started here in January of 2021. I bring over 40 years of maintenance supervisor experience to the SRA. My experience includes working with the largest HOA in the state of Washington in developing and managing various maintenance programs. Since coming aboard, we have ensured that all employees have needed personal protection equipment and the staff has been trained in de-icing and snow removal skills. We are currently in the process of evaluating our skills, including commercial driver's license training and hazardous tree determination. And we started evaluation of very SRAS assets, including the gates and the entrance areas. Using the results of our evaluation, <clears throat> I'm developing a repair and annual maintenance plan to bring our assets back to fully functional condition and to provide re reasonable and reliable use as we move into the future. The end result will be an agreed upon plan that is going to be maintained when it will be done and how much it will cost you. My goal is to train the maintenance staff and my replacement to ensure that they can operate as a professional, multi-skilled employee, efficiently maintain our SRA assets and have persons that can step into my position as well as return, uh, reduce turnover. I thank you. Kurt. So, Kurt. Thank you, Bruce. Next up, we have our board treasurer, Kurt Hagman. He's going to start by discussing where our finances are and um, various policies that the committee's been working on. Kurt. So, no, I can't. Um, there are. Kurt, we can't hear you yet. There we go. All right, I am now unmuted. 
Uh, I'm Kurt Hagman. Uh, I've been uh, living here in Semiamo on Goss Hawk Road since 2012. Uh, I love the community and I uh, liked it so much that I put my name forward to stand for the board in 2014 and uh, had the pleasure of serving under uh, um, uh, Paul Atkinson and then Michael Coltart. Uh, I see my image is very poor because of the uh, light here. How's this? Okay, um, but uh, then this most current term that I'm uh, serving at now, uh, I was elected by the board of directors, not the membership, uh, to fill a vacancy uh, back in August of 2020. And since there was no treasurer, they asked me to assume that responsibility as well. Uh, so that's what I have been doing uh, uh, since uh, then. And it's been a quite a rewarding uh, experience, I would have to say. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was to uh, allay people's concerns that the SRA is in poor financial condition because we are not. Uh, in 2020, we had a, a $30,000 profit in the operating account in spite of the significant spending we had on uh, consulting and uh, professional services. And that includes uh, uh, some additional spending on, on uh, legal expertise as well. Uh, and, and so we still ended up the year in a positive way. Uh, on the restricted reserve, uh, we did spend more than we took in. Uh, we spent $188,125. We only took in about $85,000. Uh, but when we started 2020, we were 140% plus fully funded as per the reserve study. Uh, even after this spending, we'll still be uh, in good financial shape at the end of uh, 2021. Uh, cash on hand at the end of last year was $964,200. Now, all of that is not available for us to spend because about half of it is in the restricted reserve and that money cannot be transferred to the operating fund and must be spent on future capital projects. Uh, in 2021, uh, the operating account is forecast to lose money uh, to the tune of over $100,000. Uh, that is mainly because we have a revenue shortfall of $252,000 that we thought we were going to get from the real estate transfer uh, fee, which the board after significant pushback and a subsequent legal opinion decided that we should not do. And so it did leave uh, somewhat of a hole in our budget. Uh, we did uh, formulate a finance committee and uh, worked at trying to close that hole uh, shortly after I was appointed. Um, I already talked about the restricted reserve there, so I'll move on to the cash at hand is projected at the end of 2021 to be $692,000. And about half of that again is in the restricted reserve. Uh, next slide. So uh, uh, when I got involved in August and then September, we were fairly close to the annual general meeting. Um, but what I, uh, worked with Jennifer Spidel on from Joint Partners uh, since then is trying to institutionalize uh, many financial policies. And I, I should point out that before this year, we were really expecting quite a bit of Debbie Smith because she was the executive director, but she was doing all of the financial uh, heavy lifting as well. And so it's been quite helpful to me to have Jennifer Spidel to work with on the financial side. And uh, with involvement of the, we got off the blocks fairly quickly with the financial or the finance committee. Uh, uh, in fact, we got off the block so fast that we didn't have a charter yet. 
And so some of the work that we did to try to rework the uh, 2021 budget uh, uh, was done by uh, a somewhat unofficial committee, uh, but we, uh, we nevertheless uh, uh, functioned and I think provided some useful uh, uh, input to the board. Uh, as of November 2020, we got the official charter and uh, approved by the uh, board. And so since that time, the committee has functioned in, a, in an official capacity. And we worked on these uh, financial policies, which are shown on, this, on the slide here. Uh, the bank statement reconciliation and review process. Uh, which, help, which helps prevent fraud. And of course, as Jennifer said, we have no indication we've ever had fraud or expect to have fraud, but it's a process that will prevent it. Uh, a cash management policy. Uh, we always invested our funds uh, from both the restricted reserve and the um, uh, uh, operating fund in investments, but we really never had a policy to determine how much we needed to hold back uh, to handle our day-to-day -day, uh, financing requirements. So the cash management policy uh, does two things, that it, it separates uh, physically the operating and restricted reserve funds, and it has a slightly different uh, investment uh, philosophy for those two funds. And then the, the second one, it really identifies how much money we should put out there in investments and how much we need to just hold back in cash to handle our day-to-day -day expenses. Uh, the third item is a capitalization policy. Uh, we have things on our uh, asset list of capital items that we depreciate every year that have uh, were purchased for asset values of well less than $1,000. Uh, we now have a, a threshold value of $2,500 uh, to uh, determine whether it's a capital item and we've also identified all of the uh, rules that uh, are required to determine whether something is capitalized or an expense. Um, and I guess I should also say that the policy does say that if once it's in the restricted reserve, only you can spend on capital projects. Now, that was understood under every other board that existed before us, but it was never actually written down there as a policy that you cannot spend restricted reserve funds on operating expenses. So this capitalization policy uh, uh, clarifies that and enforces that. Uh, we're in the digital age, electronic bill payments. I still go over to the office to sign checks every once in a while but uh, electronic bill payments are coming along with uh, what Jennifer will talk about later with respect to transitioning our finances to an HOA bank. Uh, we'll be able to approve these expenses online. It'll be much more efficient for me and it'll be a better tracking facility for the SRA. Um, and then we have four, four other policies which are under development, which uh, hopefully will be approved uh, on the Thursday board meeting, uh, which talks about document retention, which is, or what are the key documents we need to retain to be able to conduct our financial audits in an effective way. The annual budget process revisions, we have a process for uh, the annual budget process, but it did not include any role uh, for the finance committee. Uh, now that the Finance Committee is an effective and operating uh, unit of the um, uh, board, uh, we can uh, make some revisions that uh, include their role. Uh, we have an investment policy that's very restrictive. It only uh, talks about investing in CDs. It really doesn't talk about the, the length of term that we should invest in. Uh, but the uh, investment policy is under review and uh, will uh, talk about investment terms as well as perhaps some other uh, uh, really safe uh, uh, investment opportunities such as money market funds, which are not named in our existing policy. Um, the, the last one, we have a collection of overdue accounts uh, policy 
uh, but it never has undergone financial re or not uh, legal review. So we need to get uh, that policy uh, dug out and uh, get a, a legal review of it to make sure that it's enforceable. Uh, so anyway, uh, we've worked quite a bit uh, uh, since uh, uh, August and uh, joint partners, uh, specifically uh, Jennifer, has been very helpful to me as treasurer to be able to make the transition to a, a more transparent and, uh, and I think effective way of presenting our finances. And uh, so at that point, I will turn it over to Jennifer Spidel. I used to call her Spittle, but she didn't like that. So I now call her Spidel. Oh, well, thank you, Kurt. I do appreciate when my last name is pronounced Spidel. <laughs> um, to add on to where the finances are today, um, SRA is not a standard business, but a homeowners association. And uh, in a homeowners association, cash is king. Um, and we have, as part of the updated month end closing procedures and reporting, we can now see each month how much cash has actually been collected from what we've billed. Um, in general, HOAs are always two companies in one. You're an operating company and a reserve holding company, and never the two shall mix. The Federal Income Tax Code actually has a completely separate section for homeowners associations. And an interesting fact is that depreciation belongs to the membership. And that's because the reserve dues that you pay increase the cost basis of your home. Just like if you put a new roof on your home that increases your cost basis, the reserve portion of your dues that you've paid increase your cost basis. Now, um, we're also, a, or SRA is also a nonprofit for Washington State, a 501c4, and a corporation for the IRS. Just a kind of overall big picture SRA, not a standard business. Next slide. So today, the financial budgeting and accounting software accounts are aligned. And this means that we can uh, pull actual numbers every single budgeting period uh, without a lot of extra staff time in order to do that. Um, budgets are moving forward, are gonna be created with input from all stakeholders using a bottom-up budgeting method. And a bottom-up budgeting method is very detailed and it tends to be the most accurate form of budgeting as it includes every single detail of a project that leaves a lot less room for error. And we've got the executive director, committees, maintenance, contracts, HR insurance, input from all the stakeholders and major vendors that we know are going to affect our budget. Next slide. Now this is just a snapshot of the improved annual budget cycle. And you can see that we do monthly budget to actual reporting and then the next year budget assumptions in April, followed by the budget development uh, with input from everybody May through August. And then finally bringing that forward to the membership for the election in October and then moving back to our monthly budget to actual reporting. So it just keeps moving around there. Next slide. Now, I know this slide is a bit of an eye exam, uh, but the whole thing talks about preventing embezzlement. That an ounce of prevention, this proactive approach is really what you need to stay ahead of any potential problem. And while there has not been any embezzlement recorded at SRA, unfortunately, um, embezzlement at HOAs is fairly common. I've uh, Bennett worked with an HOA that had over $350,000 embezzled because one bookkeeper had control of everything. She was modifying documents and uh, stealing from the membership. And we don't want that to happen here. So let's go ahead and institute these controls, make them part of the culture and part of the process, get multiple people assigned and involved to prevent any fraud that could occur, though none has. Next slide. So the next step and currently in process is the SRA is transitioning to a bank that specializes in HOAs. We're going to move from three different banks to one uh, HOA bank and a local banking partner for cash deposits, Umpqua Bank. 
And the benefits of an HOA bank are numerous. You have better interest rates, automatic sweeping of accounts for FDIC compliance, positive pay, it's just another fraud prevention tool, streamlined check signers, um, and a multitude of other free resources which the SRA currently does not receive. Now, overall, I, I think that you'll find that the changes that we've made to address the issues that were found in September um, will help the SRA really achieve its mission and vision and also support the purpose of an HOA, which is to preserve and protect your value of your uh, real estate investment, the mechanisms for governance and funding, and then establishing rules and standards. Now, with that, I'd like to turn uh, over the presentation to SRA Director uh, Doug Woods, who is going to discuss uh, the organizational changes as well as the updated mission and vision and goals therein. Thank you. You're muted, Doug. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, well, good evening, everybody. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, thanks, everybody, for participating in tonight's uh, second town hall meeting. Uh, by way of background, Darcy and I moved into our home on uh, Sandpiper Lane, uh, Valentine's Day of 2018. So we've been here just a little over three years. And we kind of look at it as the best Valentine's gift we ever gave to each other because we just love it here. The people are are, we've met are just great and we really enjoy uh, the environment uh, and as an added bonus we're in Prestwick Village and just to give you an example of how fun it is to be in Prestwick Village over the weekend uh, we had 13 volunteers that uh, got together and we all took our rakes and shovels out and we worked on our entrance to clean it up and get ready to submit a, a re-landscape plan to the ASC. So uh, it's it's a great community. Um, I'm president of Prestwick Village. And uh, in the last election cycle, I was elected uh, to the board of directors. And so uh, like Steve Geisels, I'm kind of a newbie, a couple months uh, history here, but uh, I'm enjoying it. And it's been very, very interesting. I'm gonna talk basically on two uh, topics tonight. One is procedural changes we've incorporated in the conduct of our meetings, and the other is strategic planning. So since the beginning of the year, the board's implemented uh, several procedural changes for the sake of efficiency uh, in conducting our meetings. Uh, we implemented Robert's modified rules of order, and we did that uh, to create efficiency, and to that end, we've taken our typical meeting time from four hours down to two hours. Uh, in addition, we created a sergeant at arms role on the board, uh, which keeps track of motions, amendments, uh, maintains decorum, and keeps us on track. And again, it's really improved our efficiency and helped us keep us to that two hour uh, time frame for our board meetings. We implemented board communications rules. And what that is, is that um, agendas need to be announced and posted at least 48 hours prior to the meetings. Meeting minutes are recorded and posted on YouTube. And that's for ease and efficiency of being able to pull up records of, of the minutes and of the meetings. And you can fast forward through the parts that you don't wanna to listen to and get to the parts that you really wanna to listen to. So it's really been a, a great move and a, a nice tool to have. And then the other thing that we've done is we standardized our agenda and our minute templates. So you can imagine after every board meeting, how time consuming it can be to write up the minutes and prepare the agenda for the next board meeting uh, having templates really made that efficient for the staff. And uh, so the other thing that we've done is that we've overhauled our committee formation and process. It, um, so rather than an ad hoc process, uh, key committees such as finance, maintenance, and governance are now chartered committees. Uh, so, so what's the big deal about that? What do we really mean about chartered committees? Uh, committee. So if the next slide, please. So 
A committee charter is a founding document that helps committees deliver and uphold effective governance, a code of internal procedures defining the roles and responsibilities, as well as the mission, composition, responsibilities, and standard protocols of a committee. So what this allows is that committee char charters uh, ensure alignment of committee goals and objectives with the SRA strategic plan goals and objectives. That's, that's a big deal because what that does is that it, it starts to create really the reinforcement of the vision and the mission of the SRA. Each charter provides a clear purpose, role, responsibility, and deliverables. Adds value for volunteers because volunteers come into committee. If you've got a charter there, you can read what the committee is all about, what its goals are for the year. Each year, those charters are renewed so that um, they're updated and um, they're in place so that there's continuity from year to year, board to board. Uh, committee charters so far uh, that we've completed are the finance, governance, communications, and elections committees. And we've got um, the ASC, safety and security, maintenance and environment um, uh, committee still to, uh, to charter. So that takes me into uh, my next topic, which is the strategic planning. And strategic planning in our committee charter process really tie together. Uh, we started the year off with two strategic planning sessions in January. It, uh, it was a really, really well spent time. Uh, the fundamental building blocks of a good strategic plan is the vision and the mission statement. So we formed a task force. Uh, it was co-chaired by Steve Haynes and Kurt Hagman. And uh, it included uh, Steve Geisels, Patricia Oliveras, and myself. And um, we went out and we uh, spent back and forth, some head scratching, uh, some give and take. And we came up with uh, what we think were great vision and mission statements. The board, I guess, thought so as well. And so they were adopted. Um, as a board, we individually also developed one, three, and five-year goals that we all thought was important. And the way we did this is that we, um, Alex says, okay, guys, everybody on the board, go out and give me your one, three, and five-year goals. So we, everybody brought those back. We put them up on a board, and we looked at those, those goals, and we said, okay, let's prioritize and synthesize those goals into five goals that we could do for the year. So um, if you want to uh, go to the next slide, please. So the exercise al allowed the board to assign objectives to both management and the appropriate committees, which align nicely with the board's mission, vision, and goals. So the mission of the vision statement that we created is that the Semiamo will be the premier residential resort community in the Pacific Northwest. Okay, the next slide. Our mission statement is, our mission is to enhance and preserve the natural beauty, harmonious design, quality of life, and sense of community in Semiamo. We accomplish this by maintaining assets for safety, beauty, durability, and environmental compliance communicating regularly and openly, managing funds in a responsible, sustainable manner, enforcing our rules, procedures, and covenants, and planning for the future with strategic initiatives and capital improvements. So that, that is our mission statement. So our vision statement is supported by our mission statement. Next slide, please. So we took those all of those goals, we synthesized them into five major goals for this year. So this is what we really anticipate accomplishing this year. First of all, we're gonna update our CCNRs. We have a set of CCNRs that's 
were formed probably prior to 1986. They're in old legalese, nearly 100 pages long. And it's difficult to read. It's hard to, if you're looking up something, you don't even know where to start. So new uh, state of the art or uh, best practices CCNRs, uh, we can bring that, the density of that document down. But more importantly, we can clear out some of those uh, things that make it really difficult to run the organization, such as the rules and, and regulations and some of the procedures that are written into our CCNRs that take an amendment to change. So we're going to update the CCNRs. And with that, we will also update uh, rules, regulations, and policies so that we can actually, as a board, manage the organization much more efficiently. The second goal is to have clear processes, procedures, and policies. The next goal is resolution of the neighborhood homeowner association issues and build the relationships with those organizations. As president, and Steve Geisels, I'm sure you can say the same thing, as president of Prestwick Village, there has really been no interaction between this association and SRA. And, and it's unfortunate because I believe the SRA really has the ability to mentor and, uh, and help with the neighborhood associate, running of neighborhood or associations. So that's one of our goals for the year. The next goal that's stated uh, as the, the fourth goal, but it's really an, our first and last goal. It's communicate, communicate, communicate with membership on budget, audit, reserve plan, five-year funding plan. Basically, we want to be able to communicate very efficiently and the communications committee has now been really focused on developing the channels of communication uh, for the organization so that uh, there's really no excuse for us not to be uh, really in good communication with everyone in the association. Uh, and then the, our final uh, goal for the year is we want to we want to migrate from a board that is half in management and half in planning and everything to a board that is that governs, that creates direction, that brings expertise and experience to the table, but an organization that is staff managed because the board can't manage effectively the operations of this organization. That we need that staff to really take over and, and run. And so this year, our objective is to become a board governed, staff managed HOA with high quality training, skills, knowledge, abilities for all parties. All right, next. So our, our three year goal and our five year goals, uh, you know, they get a little bit. A little bit fuzzy. You can look down through these goals. We we kind of figured that there's there's as, as we move every year, we'll create our our one year goals and we'll prioritize those one year goals. But we'll always be looking ahead so that we've got a, a five year plan. So as you can see, you know we want to make sure our NHOAs are engaged. We want to leverage technology. We want to keep our, our communication uh, strong. Uh, we need to make sure that we're updating our strategic plan and keep it very, very current. So next drop slide. <clears throat> Here's our five year. This is some of the stuff that we looked at as our kind of our long range, very fuzzy kind of this is where we, we think the, the board will want to be. Uh, we want to remain financially strong. Uh, we want to find new revenue streams, uh, potentially new amenities. Um, we want to create a community, a community that is informed, engaged, supportive of governance. Um, we want our NHOAs to be collaborative. And um, we would like, hopefully, as a result of all that, that the board positions are sought out and are, are looked at as something people really want to participate in, uh, more fun and uh, something that's a little bit more prestigious. Uh, I think that's my last slide, isn't it? Yeah, 
that's what I thought. Okay, so I'm. Um, thank you for for listening. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Director Dr. Steve Haynes. Uh, we're one of the few board that uh, I don't know if we needed it, but at least we have a brain surgeon on staff. So, uh, Steve, uh, it's all yours. Thanks. Thanks. Hi, I'm Steve Haynes. I took over as chair of the ASC in January after serving on the ASC and governance committees for a year.